All right. So you guys have been asking for some, you guys have been asking for some HVAC videos and I have a no cool out here. And I'm doing this on my cell phone so it's gonna be spliced together. I already found the air handler, it's in an upstairs closet. And obviously the call is it's not cool. I got a blank, uh, blank thermostat. I already checked the float switch. That's not tripped, so that's not the main issue. And of course it's a gas furnace. First thing I want to check is the fuse, the low voltage fuse. And it's good. That leaves me something else to find. High voltage line. I'm not getting anything coming out of the pin going to the transformer to power up the transformer. So we got to figure out why that is. So I'm going to bring you guys along for the process of elimination, really. <clears throat> so I just took the uh, furnace door switch off right now. We're going to see if that's good or bad. And then we're going to test the uh, wire that comes from the wall plug and see if that has power coming to it. So one of these wires comes from the plug. The other one goes to the board to power the board. And I'm touching them because they're <laughs> un it's unplugged right now, but I'll be a little bit more careful when i got to actually test the, the thing. So... I want to make sure the door switch is good first, so I'm going to set my meter on continuity real quick. Basically, that just lets me know that I have a closed circuit or not, so let me see if I can prop this in some way, shape, or form. Hopefully that gives you some sort of view. If not, sorry. So, I have to push the switch in, obviously, so right now I'm not going to get a tone. So when I push down on a switch, it should beep, and it does, so the door switch is good. Set that back to voltage real quick and plug the unit back in. And all I'm going to do is test the ground. No power there. And no power there. So I need to figure out why I'm not getting power from the plug. Apparently, either that or this unit doesn't have a good, good ground. There's the ground plug right there. Nothing. neutrals okay <clears throat> I'm gonna open up this hopefully you guys saw that I'm gonna open up this here something came loose or not. It almost seems like we lost neutral or something weird like that. Wish I had my my head mount camera. Oh, there we go. That's where we lost power. This wire nut failed. So, all right, I pulled the wires out a little bit so you can get a better idea of what it looks like here. 
that wire nut failed. This one not too far behind. As you can see the wires there overheated. And that is the uh, power wire down to the transformer or to the board to power the board. So I'm gonna get this all fixed and I'm gonna be, end up snipping all back a lot of this wire here, cleaning it up. That way we have fresh wire to work with. So let me do that real quick and I'll show you what's up. All right, I got the uh, door switch put back on and I have the wire repairs made. So I'm gonna plug it in real quick. Let's see if our thermostat comes on. I mean, we're gonna be able to see if the board comes on too, which it does. Thermostat is on. It's hot in here. So I'm gonna put the uh, panel back on real quick and we're gonna fire it up and test the rest of the system. All right. So let's see, set it 89, we're gonna go 85, and I think it's 92 in here. This is gonna have a five minute delay, so we're gonna wait for that. What we'll, we'll do is kick on the fan real quick. That doesn't sound good. I did. I did test the capacitor and it's pretty low, so that might be why that thing's lagging on startup. That sounded rough. <laughs> so we'll wait for cooling to uh, come on and I guess enjoy the mountain view. <laughs> that sounded like garbage. Alright, come to you guys when this thing uh, kicks the compressor. I feel cool air coming from somewhere out right here. There's a vent. That feels nice. Ugh. 93. I'm not sweating as bad right now because I can feel cool air. So I need to take an amp draw on this motor. And it looks like it's rated about 12 amps. Um, so I need to take an amp draw on this. The capacitor, I already checked the capacitor and it is fairly weak. So that may be why it's lagging on the startup. So I'll throw a different one in there, see if that helps it um, get in there and I'll see if the, the bearings on the motor are dragging it all. So but right now it's running. So I'll take a temp split and all that good stuff and I'll come back at you guys if uh, anything else happens with it. So I came out to inspect the uh, outdoor unit um, for the upstairs unit. And I noticed that this was running a little funky. This has a uh, uh, start kit on it, which basically helps the starting amperage of the compressor when it starts, so caps don't have to take all the hit and all that good stuff. So anyways, the start assist has failed as well. You can see there's a little relief valve there that's punctured or blown through, and this resistor is bad. So <clears throat> you can see all the oil from the cap up here. So this is bad, and this will cause the, the compressor to not want to run or run really, really weird. Oftentimes, I usually see it where it'll uh, trip the breaker, but this house apparently just doesn't like tripping breakers. So I'm gonna take the uh, start assist off. This is not a factory start assist. This is something somebody down the road put on. So I'm gonna take it off, test this uh, this run cap here, and see uh, the condition of that. And then uh, by that time, we should have some options put together for the homeowner. So. Let me get that done now, and then uh, if they're going to let us do the repairs, then we'll do the repairs. Alright, good. Alright, so the uh, run cap tested out alright, so uh, it's still within its tolerance range. And I can't get this completely unassembled or uninstalled yet because I'm going to screw it up down here. So uh, we're going to put this cap back up. We're going to talk to the homeowner right now. I gotta call them. They actually live in Canada. This is like their vacation home. So I need to go talk to them. And uh, like I said, if they let us do the repairs, then uh, we're gonna do the repairs. All right, guys. So I talked with the customer, and he wants to move forward with repairs. He also wanted me to do another repair, which is controversial to me, but I'll let you know. He wants to do the outdoor capacitor. 
I told him the other one is still within operating range, which it has a 6% since 6 tolerance. It's still within that. But because they're not here that often, they want to get it replaced so they don't have to have any issues with it later on down the road. So that's why we're going to replace that. I'm going to start on the indoor unit first. And then um, by the time I get done with the downstairs unit, the thermostat should have its five minute delay over and we should be able to just fire it up. And I'm going to watch it run for a while, make sure it cools, make sure nothing weird happens. So I'm taking it apart right now. So. Here we go. Sorry if you can't see a damn thing. Yeah, this cap is hot, man. Oh, there's the bad one. she wrote for up at the air handler here so put this panel back on doesn't sound much better it sounds like a lot of vibration but it started a little bit quicker it still has all that vibration um, the bearings look good, it's not, sorry, the, the bearings look good, it's not leaking any oil, there's no play in it, so I would have a really hard time telling somebody that they have to replace that motor. Oh my gosh. So, I don't remember if I took a video of it, but it was running at 10 amps before, now it's running at 6. This is, this is one of those dilemmas where everything, where it seems like it's working just fine, but it could fail because of bad capacitor. I'm, I, mm. I'm gonna have to figure out how to approach that one and kind of weigh my options a little bit. So anyways, I'm gonna go to the outdoor unit. We're gonna be installing the uh, new capacitor, which is this big nasty fucker. And also, uh, I'm gonna be putting on a new hard start because you want that the thing the inrush test that I did on it is um, 183 amps 183 amps so that's a lot so we're gonna put that on see what we can get it down to on the startup and hopefully take some of the wear and tear off of that unit so let me uh, finish putting the furnace all back together and then we'll be done up here and we'll kick that out door units uh, back on all right so I got the uh, cabinet in here I got everything installed the new uh, start assist and the new capacitor. What I want to do is I want to see what my starting average is now with a good working start kit. So we're going to do an inrush test on it. I'm going to plug it in. One oh three from one hundred and eighty, so much better. And we'll take a look at what the lock rotor is on this unit. looks like locked rotor on this unit's 148 amps so we're below that so we're doing some good we were 40 amps over so uh, let me get it all buttoned up and we're gonna just watch it cool for a little bit all right so it's 94 up here right now so we're gonna give this about 20 to 30 minutes I'm just making sure I buttoned everything up and got all my junk so 94 up here right now we'll see what it looks like here in about 20 30 minutes, and we'll be out of here. Oh, really?